All right, so welcome back to episode number five of our Discord dashboard series. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go ahead and set up the guild. Uh, I keep forgetting what it's called. I think it's the guild create events. And remember in the last video what I mentioned, this event is responsible for whenever you join a Discord server, or I'm sorry, whenever the bot joins a Discord server, it's going to emit an event. And that event is called the Guild Create Event. Okay, and this is what we're going to use in order to actually uh, create a default guild configuration. Now, you don't need to do it this way. If you prefer, what you can do is whenever the bot joins the server, you can just have the moderator or the administrator use some kind of command, like, you know, like an initialization command or like a setup command. And then that can also do the trick too. But um, honestly, I think it wouldn't hurt to use the guild create. So that way we don't have to uh, create a bunch of, you know, different commands that just, do, you know, you know what I mean? Like we don't have to really do, we don't have to really implement a bunch of commands to do all these things. And I think it's a lot better too, because it pretty much does everything. So the, so the, the administrator doesn't need to do anything additional. Everything's all good to go. Okay. So now regarding the guild create event, uh, let me actually look something up. Discord events uh because we need to make sure that um that the guild create event is part of the intents that we have opted in so by default the slappy package will opt into two intents the guilds as well as guild messages i think it should fall under guilds i'm just double checking it's just so that uh we can see uh, yes, so guild create does fall under the guild intent, so that's great. So we don't have to do anything else with the intents. I should have also mentioned something about the intents too, but um, yeah, by default, these are the ones that are enabled, okay, and we should be fine. Okay, so uh, we should be able to use the uh, uh, guild create intents. What I'm going to do is now, if you're using Slappy, you can actually do this. So let me actually uh, open up another tab. And let me go into here. So you can actually do sloppy gen or whoops. You can actually generate an event and we can go ahead and select the guild create event. So you press space bar and that will select it for you. Hit enter and it will generate this guild create event for you. Uh, I think this should be fine. Uh, it doesn't seem anything crazy right now. Uh, so what we're going to do is... Just gonna log hello world and I'll just also log. Let me use uh, this join guild.name. All right, let's do that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Discord real quick, right over here. And what we're gonna do essentially is I'm gonna go back to this page where I wanted to authorize the bot. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the bot uh, if it'll even let me. Oh, that's me. Uh, there's this new timeout feature too. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I haven't had a chance to really pay much attention to all these new features. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and invite the bot back, and let's just go. Let, let me just make sure my okay, yeah, our Discord bot is up and running. So the bot was able to join, and you can see that in the logs it says "Hello World joined Lexus ES350 server." And you can see that uh, that's literally coming from this event. So good, and you can see that Slappy literally registers this event, so we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, which I think is great. Okay, so what does this mean? So anytime our bot will join the server, um, essentially what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a guild configuration. Now, it becomes tricky. What happens if the bot leaves the server and it rejoins at some point? What should happen then with the guild configuration record in the database? Should it get deleted? Should it... Um, you know, should it stay? What should really happen? Now, that's really up to you as the developer on how you want to implement it. Personally, for me, um, I think honestly, if you, I, I think personally for me, I would uh, not delete it because you never know if the, uh, the owner of the server wants to add the bot back and you can have all of the previous configurations. You could delete it if you want to, um, but I think it would be okay. Um, I think, you know, maybe... It, it would be fine to leave the previous configurations um and then you know you know what i mean but i don't, I don't think it really matters too much though 
Um, but let's say, for example, if the owner deletes the server, which means that's going to kick out the bot anyways, you might risk having guild configurations for servers that will never literally exist ever again. So I think, you know, again, it's the, these are things that I would encourage uh, you as a developer to think through. But for the sake of demonstration, for the sake of simplicity, I am just going to not delete it. Um, or actually, you know what? I will, I will actually delete it from the database. Uh, hopefully, there won't be any issues. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, so since we are going to be deleting it, we don't have to really worry about there being a duplicate. But we still will set the unique constraint. We can at least assume that it's a lot more safer. So what we'll do is... Um, what we'll do this is we'll first find and make sure that if there is a guild configuration, um, we'll do something about that. And if there isn't, then we'll create one. All right, so the next step that we need to do from here is we need to actually search the database, see if there is a guild configuration. Now, we are not going to delete the guild configuration at all. And the reason why is because we are using a, uh, a relational database. When you start to have a bunch of one-to-one, one-to-many um, relationships, or even many-to-many -many relationships, deleting a parent record becomes very difficult because you cannot really. There's going to be that child, uh, that child table constraint, so it's not going to allow you to immediately just delete the parent record just like that. Um, so these are some of the downsides when it comes to MySQL. You can't just delete a record easily because there's a bunch of uh, child records. So depending on how deeply nested these records can be, deleting sometimes uh, isn't really recommended, but you can still delete. It just becomes a lot more difficult and you might run into some issues. So I'm not going to delete anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the guild does have a guild configuration. And if they do, um, then we're not going to create one. If they don't, then we'll create one. So it's going to be very simple. All we got to do is uh, first we got to get the actual uh, repository for this guild configuration. So um, if you don't know what your repository is. So basically, in general, uh, there is something called a repository and repositories. You can think of a repository like a data access layer. It's pretty much the API that's responsible or you can think of it like a layer that's responsible for interacting with the database and retrieving like stuff from the database so either performing a read performing updates deleting um, creating records that's what repositories typically are responsible for so type arm has a repository uh, concept as repository api that you can use to literally interact with the database record and we're going to get that now how do we do that well it's very simple we got to first import the get repository method or function from the type arm library so that should be pretty simple. I should be able to do it uh, like this. Let me just see. I should be able to just go into the constructor and do this with no issues. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, config repository. Uh, get repository. You know, configuration. Let's see if this throws an issue. Shouldn't be any issue. Okay, so it's going to give us an issue saying connection default was not found. The reason why this is happening is because um, it's trying to retrieve this repository before the database has even connected. And the reason why this happens is because when we call register events and register commands, it's literally going to load up the, it's literally going to instantiate these before the database has been connected. To fix this, uh, we, sh we can just literally just connect to the database before. And this error should go away. Yep, there we go. So yeah, we can easily just connect to database before and that should do the trick. So now we can easily just uh, get these repositories and we can do whatever we want. So let's go ahead and try to find, um, let's search the database for a guild configuration. And what exactly, what conditions are we gonna use to search? Well, we're not gonna use the ID because we don't know what the ID is, right? The ID is literally a primary key that's generated for us and we won't know that. So we're gonna actually use the guild ID because that's what's gonna be unique for every single guild. Every single guild has its own unique ID. So we're gonna use the guild ID, okay? And that's this guild ID property, not the ID, that's the generated primary key. We're gonna use the, the actual guild ID. So let's go ahead and do const config equals await 
And we'll go ahead and use this stock guild config repository, find one. We'll pass in the guild ID. Okay, shouldn't get any issues with that. Just want to make sure to, okay, great. So um, if config console log log, I'll just simply write uh, a configuration was found, then we won't create it. However, if it was not found, um, then we can go ahead and create one. Now there, I think there should be something like an upsert where, um, actually, but I don't think that's what we want to use though, because that's kind of like an update or insert, but we're going to be fine because we don't want to update anything really. Okay. Uh, but there's no find one or like, you know, create something like that. There's not, there's, there's not that in type ORM, but that's okay. I'll just write a console log and it's very useful to write console logs to help you keep track of the state of your application or helps you debug it a lot easier. A configuration was not found. Creating one. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and create one. So to do this, it requires two steps. We first need to create an actual instance of guild configuration entity. To do that, we just simply call the create method. And the only properties we'll need to pass in really is just the guild ID right there. Okay. Um, and that's literally it. The prefix is going to be a question mark by default. Um, the ID is just going to be generated for us and welcome channel ID. We're not going to set that for the user by default. We're going to let them do that themselves. Okay. Once we called uh, create, this is not a uh, asynchronous operation. It just literally creates an instance for us. Okay. What's next is we need to call the dot save method. Okay. And what I'll do here is I'll just return. I'll just do return this dot guild config repository. Dot save and then pass in the entity right there. And there we go. So now we got to put this to test. So we're going to go into our discord server okay let's go ahead and kick the bots right there okay now what's next is we'll go ahead and authorize the bot to join the server again and we'll pay attention to the log so our bot is up and running so we'll have to pay attention to all this okay uh so let's go ahead and have the bot join the bot has joined let's check the server seems like there is an issue Let's see what's going on. So, um, okay, so it says a configuration not found, so that's correct. However, it's saying welcome channel ID does not have a default value. Uh, okay, that's okay. So what the, what the problem here is that it doesn't have a default value, and we can set one, that's fine. Or we can just say nullable, so that's true. I thought by default, type arm would do that for us, but it's okay. We'll set nullable to true, so this column is allowed to be null. Uh, I think by default, it wasn't allowed to be null, so that way, and there was no default value, so it's going to give us an issue. Uh, but doing that would fix it, or we could have just done welcome channel ID and set that to an empty string, but like I said, there's many different variations you could do, but this should suffice. Uh, so there should not be anything in the database. It should have failed to... We can debug that. You can see that it's still an empty set, which is correct. Okay. Let me remove this side tab as well. So let's go ahead and redo this process. We're going to keep doing it over and over again. That's how we're going to, you know, uh, test things out. Okay, that's the whole process of creating the score bots. Okay, so the bot's going to be in the server. Let's check the logs. Seems like there were no issues. Uh, oh, the message event is deprecated. Oh, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, fix that real quick. It should be message create, not message. But that's not the big issue right now. Uh, so it seems like when the bot joined, it seems like it was able to create a configuration and there was no issues. There were no errors being thrown. We should also wrap this in a try catch, but let's just go ahead and check what happens. And you can see that when I go ahead and select from this table, we can see that we have the generated primary key. We can see that there is the guild ID. That's literally the same exact guild ID as our server. If I right click this, it seems like it won't let me. I need to enable. Uh, let me see if I can do that real quick. Uh, let's see appearance let's go over to uh where i think it's not apparent it's uh where's i think it's developers yeah there we go 
Okay, yeah. So it wasn't appearance. You have to go into advanced. And enable developer mode. So copy ID. You can see that it's literally the same exact ID, 926025. Yeah, it's the same one. You can see that the welcome channel ID uh, field is null. And then the prefix is set to question mark by default. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now if we kick the bot, okay, if we kick the bot, let's kick the bot. And if we look in the database, we should still have that record. If the bot rejoins, okay, let's have the bot rejoin. It's going to go through the logic again, and you can see that a configuration was found. So no new one should be created, and there you go. That's pretty much how that logic works. So where, where do we go from here now? What's the whole purpose of this? Well, now that the configuration has been created, and we also established that we're not going to be deleting anything when the bot leaves. We're just going to reuse the, the, the old configuration just to save, uh, just to avoid a lot of conflict. What's next from here is now we can actually write commands that will use the prefixes or the prefix that is set in the database. Right now, this test command that I have that was generated by Slappy by default, this uses the default uh, the default uh, prefix that was set inside index.ts right over here. So Slappy uses um, the config.prefix, which literally this comes from the slappy.json file, which is literally right over here. But we're not going to, we're going to migrate from that. We're not going to use that hard-coded prefix anymore. Right? Because if we did that, we wouldn't allow we wouldn't be able to allow guilds to have their own custom prefix. But now that we have a database, and now that each uh, each guild will have its own configuration, we can easily uh, use custom prefixes now. Okay, so uh, I'll save that for the next episode because, like I said, I want to keep this nice and short. So hopefully this all made sense. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, migrate from using the hard-coded prefix from the JSON file. We're going to migrate that from actually using an actual guild configuration. And I'm going to show you all how to actually set that up. So I will see you all in that next video. Peace out.